you know, I didn't expect this to be alright. Um, I did not like the first one. I thought it was kind of bad, but, you know, this, this ain't bad. This is, um, decent, I guess. So We the Pooh Blood and Honey 2, it's a horror film directed by Reese Ray Waterfield starring Scott Chambers and it is a sequel to 2023's Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey which came out to subpar reviews from both critics and audiences and I myself found it a bit boring but it's not the worst thing out there. How does the sequel fare though? Because this movie begins deep in the Andrea Woods where a destructive rage begins to grow within Winnie the Pooh. Piglet, Owl and Tigger as they find their home and lives endangered after Christopher Robin revealed their existence and they don't want to live in the shadows any longer. So the group decides to take the flight to the town of Ashton, home of Christopher Robin, leaving a bloody trail of death and mayhem in their wake. So Winnie and his friend Savage um, will show everyone that they're deadlier, stronger and smarter than anyone could ever imagine and they want to get their revenge on Christopher Robin once and for all. You know, unlike the first film, I think this definitely came out to a lot of people's surprises. Especially when it received 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. However, that has now fallen to around like 40-something percent. And the audience skills still a bit up there. But what do I think about it? Because, you know, that's what you guys are here for. Well, I think this movie is a huge improvement over the first one. There are still a few issues with the movie, mainly it has a load of plot holes, characters randomly going from one place to another in a split second. And, yeah, um, I'm going to talk about some positives before I get to the negatives, just so that I can talk about some good stuff and then get into like some of the things that I find kind of annoying or just like a bit confusing about the movie. Um, and I'll get into that mainly in the spoiler section so that I can talk about them properly. Um, but yeah, yeah, but as I said, this movie is a huge improvement over the first one, um, and it's, it's just pretty cool, so yeah, it's, it's got a lot of really good practical effects, and way more interesting kills than the original, the story also makes much more sense than the original, but as I said, it does have quite a few plot holes and dialogue issues, a lot of the characters have guns, which doesn't make much sense since it takes place in the UK, but I can look past that, <laughs> you know, maybe they all had gun licenses, it is a little town, I mean the character designs this time, as I said, they are maybe using practical effects rather than a mask that you could probably buy off Amazon or Trick or Treat Studios, I think that was a really good idea, it does make it look much more realistic and more animalistic in a way as well. I think the only time when it doesn't really work is with young Winnie the Pooh, as it looks a bit goofy. You can kind of see his actual neck, but um, it still does look really good. Um, the blood they use at some points um, was also sort of an issue, though, as um, some of it is CGI'd in, and you can really tell. Well, like, and I think in one scene they pull a person's arm off, and in that bit, it's like fake blood coming out, and it was kind of obvious. I mean, the acting in the movie is pretty good, um, besides from the beginning of the movie when um, Christopher Robin kind of looks like he's laughing. Um, he looks like he's trying to hold back laughter when his therapist is like talking to him, which was kind of weird, but, you know. Um, th I, I can look past that as well. I, I do think that there will be a lot of people who do enjoy this. Um, it is just a goofy movie. Get it? Goofy, Disney, yeah, yeah, but, um, <laughs> um, it's too early for this, it's like, seven in the morning, but, um, when I'm recording this, not when it's coming out, or I'm not putting the video out at seven in the morning, after I've recorded it, that's not enough time to edit it, but, um, yeah, I, th I think that a lot of people will really enjoy this one, I think it's fairly decent, it's got a load of good practical effects, practical kills, the gore is really, really cool. It's got, like, 40-something kills in the movie, which is insane. I mean, I think the only bit which I didn't really like was just, um, one of the, um, animal, 
Animal Killers characters, you know, Tigger. He was basically just a knockoff Freddy Krueger, which they did say he has a lot of Freddy Krueger inspiration, but he is literally just Freddy Krueger, but with like a new paint of skin and fur, I guess. But um, once again, it's just taking inspiration from someone else and shoving it in there. They kind of do the same thing with Pooh at the end. Um, he's basically just Leatherface at the end of the movie with his bloody chainsaw that goes on fire. But, um, yeah, it's it's still, as I said, it's quite goofy. It's kind of campy at some points, which is what the original was missing. It took itself way too seriously for a movie that is supposed to be about Winnie the Pooh murdering people. And this movie's made back its budget about six times now. I think it was made in the budget of one million. It's, um... So you got to count, count of that with like a bit of marketing cost. So, um, yeah, it's definitely made its budget back. So I'm looking forward to whatever they're making next. I'm pretty sure they're doing Peter Pan horror movie next. So I'm looking forward to that. But I want to get to some spoilers for this movie now. So if you haven't seen the movie, click off, come back, watch the rest of the video. Or if you're willing to hear some spoilers, stick around because... I have a lot of thoughts about a lot of the things in this movie. Um, so yeah, um, spoiler talk now. Because this movie continues the tale set forth in the first film. It begins with another narration. I think it's the same narrator. I'm not sure. I haven't seen the first film in about a year. Um, <laughs> basically when it came out. Um, and... He basically just recaps the first film along with giving you a bit more of some exposition. It's basically just a huge exposition dump for those who haven't seen the first movie. But it is kind of necessary because some people who will go into watching this aren't going to see the first movie. Because they'll see the first movie and just be like, that looks terrible. Let me just watch this one. Um, I definitely saw a lot of people online being like that. A lot of my friends were like that. I think... No, no, it wasn't, it wasn't like that. <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say the last one, but yeah, um, I, 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 I don't really enjoy kind of um huge exposition dumps, but the animation in the beginning is once again one of the best parts of the movie. That's what I do really enjoy. It's like this hand drawn animation, and it's really, really nice. It works really smoothly. Um, and we then cut to Christopher Robin in a therapy session. You know. Um, I kind of thought he would have needed more, like, physical stuff rather than, like, mental stuff. Although it's been about, what, like, a year? Is that what they're saying? Because, like, wasn't he whipped on his back, like, 70 times by poo? And... But, yeah. <laughs> it would be funny if, like, they have... If, if they've added one of those scenes where, like, the character just, like, takes off his shirt and then you see all the scars on his back. And then, like, one of the killers just appears. <laughs> like, while you're trying to, like, see this, like, moment with the character where they're obviously dealing with something. And then they just instantly get rid of it and just continue on with, like, the murderous rampage anyway. But, you know, if that's not in the movie, I'm just coming up with random stupid stuff. But, yeah, um... He's having a little therapy session because, of course, he's traumatised after that massacre, the Hundred Acre Massacre, I think is what they're calling it. Kind of like Tesla Chainsaw Massacre. But, um, yeah. And he then leaves and he finds his mate outside and she's like, get in the car, I'll drive you home. He's like, no. And she's just like, get in the car. And he's like, Jesus Christ, okay, I'll get in the car. So, so he gets in the car. Um, <sighs> and yeah, he's really just an outcast in this movie. Because he's still tormented. Like, he's just tormented by the nightmares of Pooh. And to cope with his trauma, he goes to therapy. But everyone thinks that he murdered everyone in the woods. So, it doesn't really go very well. Also, didn't he have a fiancé? I feel like we're just sort of forgotten about that. I mean, she wasn't really... <laughs> she wasn't really um, the biggest character in the first movie, but... I swear he had a fiancé, or was that just made up for the first movie, which is now a movie in the movie? Yeah, it's kind of weird, but... What, what, what happened to that? Like, I feel, I feel like they just forgot about that. There, there's no scene where, like, his parents just go... 
yeah, I mean, I'm sorry for your loss with your fiance, man. Or, like, no one does that. They're more just focused on, like, his brother who got kidnapped years ago. But then they don't talk about that in the first movie. So, it's definitely disconnected, which I feel was the better option to go with in this in this case. And, yeah, so he gets back to his house and he sees that um, his mate has got his car there. Because um, someone had, like, wrecked it, I guess. And the moment that he gets there, he sees that someone spray painting murderer over his car. So, um, that's nice, I guess. Vandalism. Let's go. But, um, yeah. <laughs> um, so the dad's just sort of scrubbing it, trying to get it off. But he, Christopher's just like, I don't think that's going to come off. And he's just like, oh, I will. It's fine. Um, so they all go inside, and then he goes upstairs to his little sister's room to try and get her to come downstairs for dinner. Um, and this is Bunny Robin. Um, I believe that she does have another name. I just don't remember it, because that's what they call her in the movie. They just call her Bunny. So I'll just go with Bunny, I guess. Um, and yeah, <laughs> he takes her downstairs after like messing around with her for a bit, and... Um, meanwhile, at the Hundred Acre Woods, there's these three blokes going around. These are guys who believe Christopher. And they are, I guess, trying to find Pooh because this guy is... I'm not sure exactly what it was. I couldn't tell if it was his girlfriend or his sister or his niece, something like that. Someone who was sort of related to one of the guys was killed in the Hundred Acre Massacre. So, he wants to, like, kill them. He doesn't really, as I said, he doesn't really say who. He just goes, my girl was killed here. So, was it his daughter, or... He doesn't look that old, so I don't think it was his daughter, but... You know. But, yeah. Um, so, Pooh, um, Owl, and Piglet then appear. And Piglet gets shot in the face twice. So, Piglet's dead, again. Poor Piglet. Um... Can't, can't catch a break in these movies, sadly. But um, he's going to come back. <laughs> the ending of this movie basically just tells you they're all coming back. Um, and yeah. So they kill all the guys, except for one, I believe. And this guy is then just sat there with a disfigured face from Pooh mauling him. Um, so he then walks all the way back to town to the hospital... And meanwhile, Christopher just got fired because no one likes him anymore. Uh, <laughs> that's literally the whole reason, basically. No one trusts him and no one likes him. So they're just like, we're going to have to let you go. I'm sorry. It's not about you. You know, it's the hospital. All that kind of BS where, like, they just got to say it to not make themselves seem like a-holes. But they are. <laughs> and yeah. Meanwhile, back at the woods, the guy's still walking back to the hospital, but yeah, he gets to the hospital, and then Christopher's just still stood there in shock from, like, being fired, and they just rush him in, he's like, oh my god, that's Harry, I, I can't remember if his name is actually Harry or not, but I think it was, I watched this, like, last night, so, that was at, like, one in the morning, and it's now seven in the morning, so I should remember all of this, but, you know, <laughs> didn't drink my daily monster yesterday. But, um, yeah, so, they rush him into, like, surgery, and then afterwards, Christopher sat with him, and he sort of tells him, I believe you now, it was all real, but he writes it on, like, a little whiteboard. He uses a tactic that I used in science class way too much, when my teacher would just want silence, and my row would always be the loudest, because it was just all the guys. So, we, <laughs> we, we'd, be, we'd be smart with it. I'd take out all the post-it notes from my pocket, Everyone would get a whiteboard as opposed to those. We just write notes to each other instead of, like, actually, like, just talking. Because you send people out who are talking. So, like, what, what are you going to do with that? But that, that doesn't really have anything to do with the movie. I'm just, <laughs> I'm, I'm rambling at this point. But, yeah, so, Wee the Pooh is in his little chair. He, he's got, like, a throne in this movie. He's King Pooh, I guess. But, um, yeah, so... Al is just sort of going on this, like, whole rant about how they need to go go to Ashton and kill everyone, basically, because they've been exposed now. Everyone knows of them. So, 
they may as well just, you know, go on the offensive. Just <laughs> kill the whole town. I mean, if they really want to do that, why doesn't Al just, like, fly to a government office and then just, like, grab a nuke? And <laughs> Simple solution, guys. Think smarter, not harder. But, yeah. Um, so, we then just get some bashing on this, like, cell door that's in the treehouse thing, I guess. I guess this is where Tigger is, but it doesn't make much sense as to why he's in a cell. Maybe none of them like him. Maybe he's just really annoying. So they just they just lock him up. They lock up their mate because he's so annoying. They're just like, all right, yeah, you, you killed the guy. Time to get back in the cell. When he says no, they're just like, okay, we're just going to cut off a bit of your tail every time that you say. I don't know where I'm going with this, to be honest. Um, but yeah, so... <laughs> um... So they're all they're all going on the offensive now. So they um I think it's Christopher's mate. I can't remember her name. It's somewhere in my script. It's further down, I think. Hang on. Uh Lexi. That's the name. So Lexi, Christopher's mate, who's definitely not his girlfriend. Um she's the one who picked him up in her car earlier. Yeah. She wants to pick him up. Um Yeah, so Lexi is um babysitting this little brat who I can't remember the name of, but that's literally basically how she describes him. She does not like this kid. Can't imagine why. Um, he, he just seems like he found horror movies way too early. I was going to make a joke about that, but you know, this... this <laughs> it, it, it speaks for itself. But yeah, so... Then Pooh randomly appears outside the house... Um, and then, I think it's Tigger who we get the first look of there. And, well, it was kind of, like, glitchy and blurry, but it's through this little, like, toy, Home alone S toy car. Because they're, like, sat in, like, a closet or something. I was really hoping that Pooh would just burst in there and then they just have to run because that would be kind of funny. But, um, no, they don't do that. So, <laughs> they're using this little remote control car to basically look around the house. They, they send it flying down the stairs, then they do all that kind of stuff. And they see one of the monsters, but they get the footage from it. Remember that. Um, and so, they escape the house, and then they call the police, and the police instantly arrive because the grandfather, who is a police officer to the little kid... Um, try calling them and they wouldn't pick up so um he basically told the police to go there anyway but then they called the police as well so i guess double reinforcements but yeah then one of the police officers goes into um i think it's the garage i'm not too sure where it was but it was by the house and she gets killed by poo when he rips her arm off and shoves it into her mouth um I guess that teaches me not to bite my nails. I, I, I don't know where I was going with that. I've I, I got to come up with some better jokes, guys. Like, I, I'm running dry today. It, it is, like, early in the morning. But still, I'm running dry with these jokes today. So, yeah, after Pooh was busy doing whatever he was doing with her, um, he basically just pisses off and so do the rest of the monsters. <laughs> They're all just gone. And... <laughs> Um, so they then show the footage to the police officers and they're just like, all right, th thanks for that. But, you know, I, I don't think they, I don't think they really care. They don't really believe them at this point, but they will, thankfully, because they'll have all their bodies in the end. Without, wait, no, they won't. Never mind. I just remembered the post credit scene, but I'll get to that at the end. All right. So that, that way I can have the post credit scene explained to the title or the thumbnail. But yeah, um, so... <laughs> we then get to see Christopher running around trying to, like, um, get to his house in time, I guess. But Pooh, he's already there. He's doing a little welfare check on his parents and his little sister. So, Pooh bashes, um, <laughs> his mum's head into some knives that are up, kind of like in the Chucky show. I think it's in season one, the, like, caretaker slash maid gets, like, knives in her neck when she gets pushed into a dishwasher um 
And then the dad gets killed off screen, but from the looks of it, it just looks like his limbs are sort of tall enough. So, yeah, I, I mean, he wasn't really a character. He was sort of just there. You know, we don't really get to see much of him besides, like, well, we do get one nice moment with him, with Bunny, just before he gets his limbs torn off, so. Oh, free the dad, man. He, he didn't do anything wrong. But yeah, um, so, Pooh then just takes Bunny, I guess. He, he, he just took her. Um, I don't know what he was planning to do with her, because it's, it's not like he's going to kill a child, because they, in an earlier scene, there was a hunter and his kid, and Al killed the hunter, but didn't kill his kid, so... Not a hunter, a bird watcher. Oh, that's even worse. Why would you kill a bird watcher? What have they ever done? Like, like if 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 it was a cyclist, I'd understand. You know, they get in the way on the roads. But like, why a bird watcher? <laughs> but yeah, so we then get to have um, a rave. <laughs> There's literally just a rave going on, and Christopher decides to go to the rave after he cries about his parents dying. I guess he wanted to have a good time and just get drunk, but no, he, he obviously knows that all the monsters have gone there. And this is where we get a load of the scenes from the trailer and also on the back of the DVD cover, um, where Pooh is just running up and down this hallway, killing a bunch of people. And then we get some Tigger action when he um, is just I also, I just have to say, huge missed opportunity to not have him bounce around on his tail down. <laughs> not, not to have him, like, bounce on his tail to get up to the high places where people were hiding. That would be hilarious. But, um, they don't do that. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> so, Winnie the Pooh is just disappeared for a while, and we get to have Tigger murdering a bunch of people. And as I said, he's kind of inspired by Freddy Krueger. But it's straight down to the curse words he uses. Like, this man was just saying B every chance he got. I'm not gonna, like, you know, I don't swear in the videos unless it's, like, a guy's name and his name Dick for Richard. But, like, <laughs> um, So, we then get to have, um, after that little fun Tigger massacre thing... Um, Pooh is still murdering a bunch of people, and he shoves a guy into, like, well, no, the guy hops into the furnace, then he notices him. <laughs> he didn't notice him at first. Like, he's walking past, the guy probably just, like, breathed a sigh of relief, then he just, and Pooh just, like, is stood there, and he turns in, he's just like... So he, he turns on the furnace all the way, then this other woman runs over, and he's like, No, don't do it, no, no, and then he just, then he just flings her, and then he grabs a drill, and then he drills it into her eye. As I said, the kills in this movie are really well done. But then we get one of the plot holes of the movie not long after this, but I'll get to that once I talk about Tigger's death scene. Because, you know, he's just sort of stood there doing absolutely nothing, and Christopher just shoots him. Also, I forgot to talk about a scene that happened earlier. So in a scene that happened earlier, Christopher finds the bloke that took his brother... And basically, this guy um, was giving all the kids to this bloke who was a genetic scientist. And then he mixed the kids with some animals, and then they became Winnie the Pooh, Tigger, Owl, Piglet. So they were all Christopher's mates, and then they became his worst nightmare. And furries. So yeah, um... So Christopher um, then is outside for some reason after he shoots Tigger in the stomach twice. Um, and I guess he just he just dies there because you know he looked like he was kind of walking away, but no, I guess he died. But um, so he's outside for some reason, and so is Pooh, and Pooh suddenly has a chainsaw. So I guess we're not going to explain where that came from. But as I said, I I digress. It's fine. But, um. And Pooh then chainsaws a car, and then the gasoline turns it on fire, I guess. So, <laughs> bloody Pooh chases him with a flaming chainsaw, and Christopher then hides in another run-down car. 
and then who just sticks the chainsaw through the side. So he gets out the car on the other door, and then lock <laughs> he closes the door on Pooh when he gets in the car. Um, but yeah, they then they then get outside and um, they get to the bit where Pooh dug himself out of a grave when he was a kid. This is where we get the bit where you can see the neck. Um, and yeah, Pooh is then just like. Oh my god. That was where I was when I was like... How old was he when he was kidnapped? What? Seven? Ten? Around that age? I, th I think that was it. But, um... Yeah, so he has a little reminiscing moment. Then Christopher Robin's just like, Don't do it! You were made to... I can't remember the thing that Obi-Wan Kenobi says, damn it. You were made to destroy the sin, not join them. But yeah, um... So Winnie the Pooh is then just really annoyed for some reason because he likes being a Sith. So he grabs Christopher Robin around the neck and he starts choking him. Which, you know, inhalers would come in pretty handy right now. So, um, yeah. He's being choked out and then Lexi appears and she just, just literally... No joke, she runs up and she jumps on Pooh, knocks him flying, and she's just on his back and then I like, run around in circles. It's kind of funny. And Christopher then's just like, Billy! No! Um, so <laughs> Pooh's just like, What did you just call me? And then Christopher gets an axe out of bloody nowhere. I I don't I don't maybe they filmed a scene where he got the axe, like it. If they just filmed a scene where it was just on the floor and he picked it up, that would have been fine. But he just sort of has one. Um, and then he whacks Pooh over the head and he shatters his head into a million pieces. And then Paul... Paul? <laughs> Paul. Pooh falls over backwards into the grave that he originally dug himself out of. Which kind of doesn't make any sense because he's quite taller, quite bigger now. So I, I, I guess that ain't going to be explained. But once again... It's fine. But yeah, um, Christopher and Lexi are then all happy. I, I bet they become girlfriend and boyfriend in the next one. Because um, they were literally like arguing about it earlier in the movie when like they said, Oh, he's not my boyfriend. Yeah. S same as Sean wasn't Ed's boyfriend and Sean the dead. Hmm? <laughs> he literally called him babe. That's what I love about that movie. But yeah. Um... <laughs> so basically... The film ends where the police randomly have found Bonnie. It would have kind of made... It, I would have kind of liked it a bit more if Christopher found Bonnie. And then, like, they get a nice moment where they, like... I'm not sure, like... They just can reconnect again. Um, but... No. And, yeah. Then they're just sat in the back of Lexi's car. Lifelong trauma for Bonnie. Continuing trauma for... Christopher Robin, both are going to need therapy. That's going to be quite expensive. And we then get the post credit scene where Owl is just sort of going on another rant again because I guess they failed, but... Did they, though? Because he's got, like, this magical honey that he's stirring. You know, he's stirring his magical pot of honey. I, I don't have a pot. I have a cup and I have a pair of scissors. So, uh, not my mic. Uh, here's what we're going to do. This is what he does, right? These are probably rust now, so I'll probably dry these off after recording this. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much how the film ends. Because he's got the bodies of Tigger, Pooh and Piglet. And I guess he's going to bring them back for the Pooniverse. Because, yeah, that's what's coming next. We're going to have the ultimate crossover movie. And I'm kind of excited for that now because it looks very interesting. Um, I am also interested in their um, Peter Pan movie because... He's got, like, this mask and he's this kind of, like, deformed Joker look. So, I'm interested um, to see where this, like, franchise goes at this point. Cinematic universe of Winnie the Pooh and friends, I guess. But, yeah, at the end, it, during the credits, it does show a lot of drawings of all the characters. Um, I'm not sure how they're going to do a horror version of the Heffalumps, but, you know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's pretty much Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2. It's a pretty good sequel to a pretty boring and kind of bad movie. And I I think that I'm 
this franchise could go a long way, um, given some time. I didn't expect the sequel to do as well as the first one, because the meme kind of died, but I guess it's actually found a fan base now, which is really good, you know. Um, and yeah, I did really enjoy this movie. The practical effects are bloody amazing. The practical effects... I, I just said practical effects, didn't I? Or did I say... Oh, whatever I said. The effects are good. Um, the kills are great. The dialogue can kind of get a bit iffy at times. Like, there's characters who just straight sound like road men. And then, <laughs> and then there's characters who sound very posh. So it, it kind of... Um, conflicting character dialogue there but you know if you don't know what a road man is look it up guys but um yeah <laughs> that's pretty much it for this video what do you guys think about Winnie the Pooh Blood 92 let me know in the comments below if you have seen the movie if you haven't seen the movie go watch it and you know you can buy the DVD now I literally found that out the day the day that it came out but I didn't go to get it the day that it came out because well my friends were sick um, so, so I got it, I got it yesterday, but, you know, <laughs> and I watched it, and, yeah, I'm excited to see where this franchise goes, and I've got to say, love the flaming chainsaw, so, I'm hoping they bring that back in some way, and that they kind of dial down the Freddy Kruegerisms with Tigger, but, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, as I said, what do you guys think about the movie, let me know in the comments below if you have seen the movie, if you haven't, Go watch it. You can watch it on Amazon Prime in the US. And you can get like the DVDs of it in the UK here now. I'm not sure if it is on any streaming services in the UK yet. But you can get the DVDs of it now. Um, but yeah. Until next time. Thank you for watching this video. Eat some honey I guess. Um, bye.